I always get questions on like, especially with younger students, like I learned this rudiment, what's the point of this rudiment? How can we apply this on a drum set? The older guys like in the university, same concept. They're always like, all right, I learned all these rudiments now, what can I do with it? So my, my goal was hopefully to come up with a couple methods to kind of guide people into a different way of thinking. Thanks, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Juan Carlito Mendoza. How Dude, you doing? I gotta shake your hand. Right on. How, how, we've been talking about this for years, since NAMM a couple years ago, and so I'm so stoked to finally have you here out at Drumeo. Thank you for being a part oh, of it. Oh, thank you for having me. It's yeah. been a long time. It's coming, weird. It's weird sure. with headphones on. <laughs> um, 
So, for those of you who don't know Juan, he, he's a, you've become a good friend of mine. I would call you at least a good friend. And so, I feel like I'm just chilling here with my, uh, just with a buddy, a drum buddy, and we're just talking to talk drums. Uh, the lesson is going to be on rudiment creativity, which is based off of Juan's book, which is incredible. I was going through it before. 11 methods to go through on each rudiment. Fantastic right idea. On. This is one of the books that's like, why didn't I come up with that? <laughs> <laughs> it was super frustrating. Uh, if you don't know who Juan is, he won won the Guitar Center drum off in 2012. He's the DCA snare drum champion. You, you can notice by the hands there, by the way. And <laughs> the, he's a professor at the New Jersey, Jersey City University as well as a middle school band director. Yeah, right on. So player, drummer, <laughs> educator, you're, you're the full meal deal. Uh, big thanks to all the sponsors. We're going to list them below. You can see some incredible gear here. But we have a ton to go over. So I don't want to you know, take up too much time with the pleasantries here, but Juan has prepared a such, I, I said it's full of meat, this, this lesson. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of meat and sauce and <laughs> everything. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so, but to check out more of him, make sure you check him out on socials, on all the socials, Instagram. We're going to post those all below and his web so, website, carlitomendoza.com. That's it. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, so let, let's get into this, man. All right on. The rudiment creativity. T tell us like the premise of the, the, the book and also I guess it's going to be kind of based off the concept of this lesson. Yeah. So, so for me, it was, it was mostly, um, I always get questions on like, especially with younger students, like I learned this rudiment, what's the point of this rudiment, how can we apply this on a drum mm. set? The older guys, like in the university, same concept. They're always like, all right, I learned all these rudiments now. What can I do with it? Mm -hmm. So my, my goal was hopefully to come up with a couple methods to kind of guide people into a different way of thinking. Right. Some of the methods are kind of obvious, and then others are not so much. Right. So that, that was my goal. And hopefully, um, and it's a conceptual thing. It's not a, a, an ability thing. Per se. What do you mean by that? Like, what I mean by that is like, you can, t like, if you're a beginner, you can use these concepts. It's not just like, okay. all right, here's a, a concept that's for the intermediate player, but it's a concept for like everyone. Right. So that that's that was my goal with the with the whole book, and and what's crazy is I wasn't even gonna write that book. I was gonna write a different book, like a hybrid book, but that wouldn't have made sense if I didn't go through the fundamental stuff first. Right. So that's volume one, and then volume two I'm starting to work on in January. So, so the premise is, is like the, the rudiment creativity is you have these 11 different methods that yep. you can do. That is the method, 11 different things within there. And then you can apply those to each specific rudiment. So, exactly. Um, so what have you got for us within this? The, there's an included PDF for those watching, and we're going to put some of the sheet music on screen. So um, what's the first one here? All right, so the first one is the split hands method. Um, but before I do that, I want to present the main idea first. Okay. So our main idea is letter A if you're on the PDF file. And essentially what we have is an inverted flam tap, two inverted flam taps, and then a flam accent. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be in 7-8. So I'll do this slow. So we have... thing is the sticking is not the normal flam tap so you just have to be careful so the second stroke mm. of of the inverted flam tap has to be upstroke uh, yeah. that way it sets you up for the left-handed flam or the right-handed flam with the next note would be upstroke yeah i call it the torture rudiment yeah because i'm so used to flam taps man and then you try and get me to do inverted flam taps and my whole brain needs to like switch yeah so what I didn't what I didn't want to do was was write stuff like the paradiddle the whole time. You know what I mean? Like everybody <laughs> well, comes didn't. up here and does that. So that's what this is. So yeah. this patterns uh, quickly. It's this up to tempo. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now the split hands method is we just take both hands. And you start getting melodic ideas because you split the hands. Right. So now, instead of it being a one surface exercise, now you can split it and now you start hearing different melodies happening. So right. the same pattern. So what I'll do is I'll play it on the snare drum first, yeah. and then I'll split it here, and I'll play it slow first so everyone can hear it. So. Yeah. That's the same pattern. I right. didn't change anything. So you, you've chosen a kind of a combination of these two rudiments. Yeah, a right? combination. You, someone 
watching if they just want to start out, they could literally just choose singles and split up the you singles. You the singles, yeah. That's right. that's probably the easiest rudiment to start right. applying this stuff to. Okay, so you're, sure. you're, you're kind of showing us after you, you've created this like cool little rhythmic orchestration here. Exactly. And you start to move it around. So exactly. You, so you split the hands and then, and then what? So then, once you do that, then the next step is, I, and let me play it one more time. If you notice the flams become a little bit more compressed, they're not gonna be like super open flams. Okay. Okay, so it's not gonna yeah. be like, then it starts sounding really sloppy. It sounds so, pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what I'll do is I'll play it on the hi-hat one more time. So. All right, so that is right-handed lead. You can also do a left-handed lead and it sounds completely different. All right, so I just want to give you a heads up. Like It doesn't always have to be right-handed lead. You can also do left-handed lead. Okay. So then the next step is now we start moving the left hand, uh, the right hand method. So we're gonna do the same thing. But now I'm gonna start moving the, the right hand around the toms to create some more textures. So <laughs> something like this. And by the way, this is letter F of your PDF file. And it's, uh, you'll see it, it says the method starts here. So we have. to get some shape, you know what I mean? I'm starting to get some grooving things happening, all right? So I'll play the original concept so far, Yeah. right hand, split yeah. methods one, and then we'll start moving the right hand. So you can see how everything kind of flows so far, all right? Cool. So we have. The same pattern. Damn, the man. same exact pattern. Trust me, there's no sorcery or anything <laughs> happening here. That's all it is. All right? So that's page three of, uh, of the PDF sheet music, just for you wondering. Like he said, it says method starts there. Yep. Okay. So now, method three will be we start moving the left hand around, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Now, you don't necessarily need to move the left hand on everything. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can just move it on one you know, count. So for example, the count that I'm going to move it on is beat five of the second bar. And in the first bar, I'm just gonna open up the hi-hat on B2. So, the same, the okay. same pattern. So, yeah. here's the same pattern with right hand moving around. That pattern is under your hands. Like that, you yeah. played that pattern a lot before you attempt that. Correct? Absolutely, absolutely. You, or you're not just doing this right now. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I had to prepare for this. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So so far, here's from the beginning. Yeah. The skeleton. I'll move it to the right hand, and then we'll move the right hand around. Then we'll move the left hand around. Okay. It's just so that everyone can see where we started from and where we're kind of ending awesome. up in. All awesome. right. So we have. Uh, I'll play on the hi hat first. See what I mean? It sounds so good. So now, yeah. the kicker is now you can play like a 316 pattern under the, the bass drum. So like one and a three, and a three, yeah. right under the seven, eight. Okay. And then you come up with a groove, so it sounds like this. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> and all that is based off of. Right. Nice. So. And so are these, so when, because uh, I mean, I haven't taken a ton of time to look through everything in the book. We just got this copy here. So are most of them the combinations of those rudiments or is it sometimes you just start with the, the rudiment? That no, so. So what I do, the, the way the, the book is broken down is the first half is a breakdown of each rudiment, yeah. like with simple exercises, okay. just so you can get the, uh, the concept and understand, like this example, what a five-stroke roll is. Right. 
Then the, the, the goal of the book is to come up with 10 different examples, mm. kind of using, you can either use one method or you can combine, start combining methods yeah. to come up with, with uh, different grooves or fills, whatever, whatever it is that you want. Right. Like it's, the only limitation is literally your creativity, right. you know, your mind. So, and it's just about exploring. That's, mm-hmm. that's the whole point. Cool. The whole thing. Awesome. Well, let's keep moving moving through this. Like I said, we got a lot to, to go through here. And so next thing we're going to talk about is the, the double stroke. Yeah, so the method four, sweeping inward and outward. So in the marching world, like there's something called marching tenors. Mm-hmm. So they have something called sweeps. So there is the inward sweep and the outward sweep. The inward sweep is when I am coming towards the body. Okay. So, for example, I can go from floor tom to snare drum that's coming in, or I can go hi hat snare drum, or whatever sound source you have. It's on the, the left easier side. one, is it not? Yeah. When I do it, I'm just like this. Yeah, like it, it just depends on, <laughs> on where you're going. Yeah. And then the outer yeah. sweep is coming from the body and you're going away from the body. Right. All right, so you're going this way, this way, or you can go this way, this way. Right. Doesn't matter. It's just, it's about just exploring what sound source you want. Right, the go. orchestration or the sound, the, exactly. the, the, the way you want the groove to sound, cool. But just, you can just say, all right, like for example, this example, I use the double stroke roll, right? So double stroke mm-hmm. roll, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. And all I tried to do is try to create a melody using the inward sweeps and outward sweeps. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's check out that example. So this cool. is the letter H. And I'm gonna swing the doubles. It's not gonna be your normal, uh, Thing, all right, because again, it doesn't just because it's a rudiment doesn't mean you have to play it military ish, you know what I mean? Right. Like, you can swing it and, and get into other things like that. Yeah. So, uh, here's application H. So, uh, let's go. So, so with doubles that works. Like, you, do you can do you have a quick example of playing with like? <laughs> sorry, I'm putting you on the spot. Something else like? Uh, like let's a, see. Root, like even just a, a single paradiddle or a single paradiddle. You can go like uh, let's see. Like you can combine it in different ways. So the paradiddle is a good one because it has a double in it. Anything yeah. that has a double is probably the easiest one to do. Right. Okay. So like even like. Like you can start combining it That's that cool. way, you know. I like to ask people questions I know. that kind of just tip them a little man. bit because everyone needs to see that you're human, man. It's a silent killer, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, method number five, correct? Yes, we're at. Okay, eleven stroke roll. So this method number five is subdivision adjustment, meaning instead of playing something in its traditional essence, mm-hmm. you can start changing the subdivision to kind of give it a different flavor. So. In this example, I'm gonna use the 11 stroke roll, and if you don't know what an 11 stroke roll is, it's just a one E and a two E on the E, I'm gonna put an accent on it. Mm -hmm. And everything else, I'm gonna put a double, so. Which is in a a traditional sense, Mm -hmm. okay? You can also play it in triplets, so one. One triplet, two triplets, three triplets, four triplets, okay? Okay? But in this case, what I did was, I put everything in a sextuplet, and my first 11 notes, are the actual uh, 11 stroke roll. But this, this is gonna be a little funky, I won't lie to you, okay? <laughs> this is a little weird, but let's see. All right, you can use that like in a, like a trap. So, so something like that, you wrote that and then learn it, and then would you just put that into music? Or you guess that's where the discipline, musical discipline yes. comes in, right? Yes, you have to be, I think there's a balance of experimentation as far as um, what you do in the practice room yeah. and musical influence. Right. So for me, it's like, I heard a, like, a, like a trap beat, 
and they had those accents in it. And I was like, man, I'm gonna try this. And it just happened to be an 11 stroke row. It wasn't like I was like, all right, here's an 11 stroke row. So that's how it it kind of came to be. And then you kind of put, this is your uh, demonstration of that. But sometimes it's it's just, it's a mathematical thing. I won't lie to you, you know, sometimes it's a mathematical thing. But most of the time for me, it's just like I try to listen to a song and say, all right, what can I do with this? Yeah. You know, and see what I I can fit in there. Awesome. Cool. So method number six. All right. Method number six is substitution. So essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to substitute a body limb for another one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we look at this example, it's a paradiddle diddle. So right, left, right, right, left, left. Paradiddle diddle, paradiddle diddle, paradiddle diddle. Right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna substitute all the uh, left hands for bass drums. So, okay? Yeah. So, obviously, you can play that as in, in a sextuplet, like one, two, three, four. You can play it in 16th notes, like one E and a two E and a three E and a four E yeah. In this case, I'm gonna play it in 30 second notes and I'm gonna displace it. So instead of starting it on the downbeat, I'm gonna actually start it on the second uh, 30 second note. So you can play it as 16th notes. Oh yeah. 16th note triplets. But Whatever. You're, gonna, you're gonna play it as 30 second notes and you're gonna displace it. I'm gonna displace it just, just because Jared's here, that's why. <laughs> All right? So <laughs> let's see if I can do this. So this is what it will be, I see. Oh, man. That's a tough that one is, to do. That man. is awesome. Cool. Let's keep moving. All right. Uh, double displacement. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. So method seven is displacement. So displacement means instead of always starting everything on the downbeat, mm-hmm. you can start putting it on any partial or any subdivision. So you can put it in, in quintuplets, whatever. Uh, I kind of just put this in triplets to make it a little bit easier. So we have a double short row. But instead of starting the double on the downbeat, I started on the second partial of the triplet. So I have like an inverted double stroke roll. Right, okay. So one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. So that would be my my uh, inverted so or displacement at this case. That pull out double there on the exactly. three, which is going to be a challenge. So we start adding some accents in there too. Yeah. Um, again, all these methods are, for me, I combine all these things. I try not right. to just stick to one thing. Um, just because it makes it more musical that way. Mm-hmm. But if you're in a bind, like you can just use that one method. Mm-hmm. So here's here's the groove in itself. So one, two, one, two, mm, mm. So again, all that is based off of a double stroke roll. Right. I'm not reinventing the wheel per se. It's just I'm just trying to think of things a little differently. That's all. Nice. So awesome. Right on. Going Keep on. Going. Keep, you're doing oh man, good. you're you're a machine. Oh Keep man. Going. So method eight is using the rudiment as an ostinato. If you don't know what ostinato is, it's just a reoccurring pattern over and over again. Mm-hmm. So we go back. We go to the paradiddle. All right. So we're gonna go right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, accenting all the downbeats. Same rate, okay? Now, the cool thing about this one is uh, this is gonna be used in a groove context, so let's check this out. One, two, Play that fast, obviously. You know, whatever tempo you're comfortable with. Nice. But the concept is just, you know, using the, the rudiment as ostinato, and you yeah. can use that in a solo situation too. Yeah, which yeah. You're, he's going to be playing a solo in a little bit. Yeah. So. Using all of these concepts. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, we'll make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, method number nine. All right. Method number nine, um, adding accents. This one's pretty self-explanatory, so we'll stay with the paradiddle. So a paradiddle, you can put the accent on the downbeat. Put it on the E. Put it on the and, which is on the double. 
on the of, et cetera. It doesn't matter. So for me, my goal is I try not to make things sound mechanical or rudimental-ish. Mm -hmm. I want things to groove. Mm -hmm. So the, a paradiddle is a great rudiment because you can make music out of that, like, so the wheels fall off the bus, you know what I mean? Yeah. So in this example, I'm gonna be using the paradiddle, but I'm gonna kinda of displace it and make it into a halftime groove as well. Okay. So I know I'm kinda of going, I'm playing these examples kinda of fast, but the PDFI has everything that I'm playing, like I'm not, you know, making things up here. So <laughs> here we, we trust you. <laughs> I hope so. Here you go. So, just quick question. Yeah. When someone says, okay, because the way I would work on this whole lesson that you're teaching now, for, for myself at least, is I would go back and I would choose one method and I would really get into that on one rudiment or like you did, I would put my doubles and parallel or whatever together. So, like what, what is the, I guess, what is the starting point there or what is the method you would recommend that people actually started on? I think the starting point is just, like you said, pick one method yeah. and pick a method that you normally would not think of. Mm. Like for example, if, it's, if you're uncomfortable with displacement, start there, you know? That way, you're really practicing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you're going into the practice room with a plan and going, all right, I know I have to, I'm gonna just work on displacement today and I'm gonna struggle and it's gonna be horrible <laughs> and <laughs> that's okay. Like, sounds like a good time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know, for, that's what it is. You know, for a drummer at least, we kind of like love that stuff, hey? We, we should be practicing that way, yeah. you know, and then record yourself at the end of the session and say, all right, did I use this method? Did I use it effectively? What can I switch, you mm -hmm. know? Maybe it's taking out a note, maybe it's putting a rest in. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it doesn't always have to be 16th notes the whole way through. Yeah. You can just start omitting things as cool. well. Awesome. Okay, I mean, I have so many, I have so many questions, but I'm gonna keep, let you keep going. <laughs> okay, you sure. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, let's look at number ten. So number ten is now that you've added accents, now you can start moving around mm -hmm. accents. All right. So, but we're gonna go back to the double stroke roll, and I'm gonna add accents, and I'm gonna move these accents around, and I'm gonna start combining. Remember the sweeping in and out? Yeah. Now I'm gonna start combining some of this stuff as well. Okay. And this is all based off of the double stroke roll. And it's, uh, it's a real funky groove, man. It's, mm -hmm. it's tough to play because you have, it's the accuracy of the sweep from the hi-hat to the rim shot right. and coming back in. Yeah. And you'll see what I'm talking about. I'll probably miss a couple of rims and stuff, but we're live. It, it doesn't matter. <laughs> all right, so we have. See what I mean? Yeah. So like, like for me, it was always, I studied all this stuff and then I go, all this stuff has to be applicable to the drum set somehow. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was my whole thought process of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. So this is, these are the, you know, pretty much some of the methods that I used the yeah. whole time just well, to the do that. Rudiments are the building blocks to everything we play, right? So Absolutely. So to learn to play them better, the rudiments, but then also to learn how they transfer to the kit through some, the, this methodology, I think is, uh, it's, a, it's a brilliant idea. Yeah, and I think the key too is just making sure that you just try not to play it in its traditional sense. You know, we're right. always taught one way and that's it. Yeah. And like we don't explore and we should be exploring like, okay, what am I gonna what can I do with this? Can I yeah. move the accent? Can I do this? You know, yeah. omit one note, displace it. Etc. Yeah, and so like for me, uh, you know, method number five, subdivision uh, adjustment. That's like when it comes to, to my exploration with rudiments, that's what I've done the most of. But I haven't really gone to like the to, to many of these other ones because I've kind of just stayed where I, I was getting the most results. But gotcha. I think it's really cool to like to, to you suggested to go to one that we're maybe not as good at and um, struggle there a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it's all about the process. I enjoy the process more than anything else. So. Yeah. You know, the struggle is, is life. It yeah. is what it is. Nice. Okay, so method number 11. All right. Uh, number 11, which is the last method, um, we just changed the time signature. So, mm -hmm. for example, I won't even play this example. Let's, let's pick a paradiddle, right? Okay. So, normally we play a paradiddle in uh, 16 notes.
yeah. right? So how about you play that in 7-8, then we start combining over the bar line things, you know? So you don't always have to play all the rudiments in 4-4 four, four or 6-8. Right. Like, you know, try to play it in, you know, 15-16. And it doesn't matter if you play that music or not. That's not the point. The point is to get some ear training happening. Right. That way when you solo, you're able to hear different vamps and you can understand where everything kind of falls into place. Yeah. So. Well, that's a, that's a great uh, segue, Juan. When you solo. <laughs> oh, okay. Because <laughs> uh, that's, that, that's the end of that. I know we blasted through those really, really quickly. Um, and Juan is doing some more uh, content for Drumio Edge members, and I'm sure he's going to um, break things down, and we'll probably go a lot slower there. But for the sake of this style and this format, it's, this is what it is, and we wanted to give you as much as possible. And this is fantastic, man. Oh, right on. Thank so you, man. I'm, I'm sure everyone watching, or I hope everyone watching, is like finding one or two little things that are really kind of like latching on, and then you can take it to your kit and give it a whirl. It's our goal that if they watch a lesson, they get to their kit. That's it. Okay. So you want to... Do a little solo and yeah, break some of these down? Let's let's see what happens, man. <laughs> we'll see. I got all this stuff set up, right? Why not? <laughs> let's see. <sighs>
<laughs> you can tell why he won the drum off uh, in 2012 or whatever. Very melodic solo with uh, just a great display of like your technique and, and your creativity. So fantastic. Thank this you so is much. Why, this is why uh, we brought him out. And this is the beauty of, of drumming, you know, best, literally best drummers in the world here. And so if you want to see more of Juan's content here, you got to check out Drumio Edge or um, we're going to be doing, a, I think we're going to be doing a podcast with you. Okay. And uh, you also have, you got to check out his site as well. I know you do lessons there and, yep. and then check out the book. So, um, Anything left to add for the students? I know he, he, you've just like dumped a whole ton of stuff on them. So any like parting words before you go into the last song? Uh, I guess my thing was just embrace the process. Mm. Be patient with everything. Um, I know a lot of this stuff seems overwhelming and trust me, this, not ha this, this didn't happen overnight. So mm. stay humble. Remember that you'll never learn everything in music, for sure. Mm. There's always something to learn. And at the end of the day, this should be fun. So even though you might be struggling with something, this should be your outlet, and this should be something that's beneficial to you and your life. So, awesome. Right Dude, on. Thank you so much. Thank you. For, for sharing and being a part of it. So the last song he's going to be playing is a song called uh, is it Odd Movements. Odd Movements. Awesome. And this is a tough one. Uh, we're gonna take some risk. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine. Hopefully, I'll see you on the other side, man. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five.